How's it going, everyone? It is Wednesday, June 12th, 2024. Let's get into the picks from the last video. I gave you a long and a short. Uh, let's start with the long first, which was ARM. So yesterday, ARM kind of grinding up higher, had some decent volume. Um, and when it came out, the video was somewhere here. I said, look, we want to get in uh, on a pullback over here on ARM. So get in on an HA reversal alert. Um, so I got in right at the 12.05 candle, uh, which was actually right before this HA reversal alert, but I liked how we were holding um, this level right here. We started to stall out and we got this huge heavy volume candle. So uh, I got a slightly more favorable entry right before that HA reversal. Um, and I was able to get a tiny amount of profit. It sort of stalled out here at the high of the day. So I managed to take a tiny win here. Now, if you got in at the H reversal alert at uh, 407.01, you wouldn't have panicked. Get in here at 4701. You expect this to break through the high of the day uh, at 1210. Here's the market uh, at 1210. So market starts to rally a little bit for the next hour stock is not participating now use this open as your stop here you don't really want to see any close below this and we test this level a couple of times and we don't actually break through uh, and then after about an hour you say hey look i entered here nothing happened after an hour this stock has lost its relative strength uh, i can exit so you have a chance to exit for this trade for a scratch or a tiny win uh, now since i set an ha reversal on my uh pick and i you know unless you ignored that and gone a little bit earlier uh you would have got the profit but because it said an ata reversal i'm just going to count that as a break even uh on arm uh, i managed to take the win um but i can't uh quite claim credit for that in the video aptv short let's take a look at that chart and let's go into the next day so uh first is set up here on the d1 had broken through two of its smas had filled in the gap as well um, a couple of maybe high volume candles coming into play uh at this level over here so um we had a nice window between these two levels um and if we look into the m5 chart aptv First huge move down, and it's testing the bid the whole day, just holding on this support level over here. And you can see that we tested VWAP and we made some lower highs. We get this kind of downward sloping uh, line from the top here. There is some selling pressure, and then we get the crack below at two. So I said, look, if we break through um, the low of the day, ideally on a nice key red bar, um, you see some heavy volume, some higher ATR. That's a good time to take a short. So enter at two. And my premise is that this stock is going to ignore the market. The market has had a weak bullish trend day uh, to this point. It is close to resistance and close to the all-time high resistance. So um, I'm not expecting the market to make a lot of headway. It should stall or it should come down. So market rallies up higher here and let's put up the spy overlay maybe that's a little bit easier to see all right so these candles here you can see the market is roaring up higher stock barely budges as soon as the market stalls and goes flat line this stock starts to go down with it so um i got in here at 76 uh 90 76.95 uh, I took partial profits over here at 76.40. Uh, so that was my my kind of passive profit target. And then my real target was this low here um, at around 76.30. So took the remaining profits over there. Uh, and that was a really nice trade, uh, a really nice win uh, for the day. So APTV looking nice. Still looking pretty good today, all things considered. Uh, market has been surging up higher huge gap up this stock is unable to get off the deck so uh not a bad short for today as well let's take these guys out
right. Um, picks we're in right now, WDC. So in my trading account, uh, I had a target out for like a 93% uh, win, 93% profit. So I was able to take that uh, today. So in my in my uh, account, I'm out of WDC. Uh, in this account, if you look at what is trading right now, uh, WDC... Well, has some super wide bid ask spreads right now. It's looking really wonky. And I'm not quite sure why. Huh. But in any case, this spread is in profit. Um, it does expire in two weeks, so not the end of this week, but the end of next week. So I think this is in good shape. We have this breakout above this level from the CPI number. Um, we have room to the top of that range, um, which I could draw kind of coming up over here. So it could even be a decent swing candidate. Not a ton of R volume right now. Um, and it's giving back some of the gains today, holding up. Um, but in the event of our put credit spread, we are in good shape. So uh, we're going to have that target out on WDC. Um, so if you're able to, if you need the buying power, you can take it back for pennies. If you don't need the buying power, you can kind of just ride it out and take the profits as they come uh, and, and really take it at expiry. <clears throat> so still going to keep that in here. We'll monitor how that's doing. Uh, Liberty. So market popped up today. So did Liberty a little bit. Tested this trend line over here, rejected off this, and now is forming a very nice hammer. So I think this is the little pullback we needed to get this rally lower. If you look at this price action over here in May, we got a very similar move where we got the strong move down, compressed for a little bit, pulled back to this trend line, and then we got the rejection, and then we got that next leg lower. So that's what I'm expecting in Liberty. Um, still comfortable holding the stock, super relatively weak. If the market does uh, pull back here from the all-time high, um, I think we'll get that next leg lower. Um, what I would do even before the FMC statement is if you're unsure about the risk, you know, you scale out, maybe take some small gains here. It's easier to manage the position. Um, and then you can ride out that full position, uh, as it confirms later, uh, because it didn't confirm immediately. So I think I mentioned that in the last video, there's a couple different ways you can manage it based on your market expectation, based on your risk tolerance. But that's what I would have done. I would have scaled out of Liberty, um, partially and then held uh, the remaining group of the FOMC, FOMC just because the D1 chart is still intact. All right, market today. We got a nice breakout from the CPI, and we got to look at the M5 to really uh, see what's going on here, how that changes the story. Um, CPI came in slightly cooler. 0.2. Excuse me. 0.2% month over month versus 0.3 expected. Um, so market had a very bullish reaction to that. It adjusted its expectations for rate cuts. And that was a pretty big reason uh, why we moved higher um, overnight. We had a little bit of, you know, maybe excitement to that CPI release overnight. But for the most part, um, big gains in that CPI number. And we started off the day on a nice gap up. Now, we didn't want to be overly confident in chasing this gap up on the open. We got a gap and go. Um, we had this bearish cross coming in, so we wanted to see what it produced. We got this bullish cross over here, and then earlier in the day, there maybe there was a nice opportunity, I thought, that could set up for a day trading long, but we never got the price confirmation uh, at this stage of the bullish cross, so I ended up not taking any longs here. Um, and you see the market just kind of drifting around, uh, doing pretty much nothing until the FOMC. So long-term market bias, I think everything is still kind of as I expected. Inflation is coming down, but it's still stubborn. Break cuts are still too. Uh, the FOMC uh, statement came out at 11, so a couple of minutes ago. And uh, Powell was, I think the remarks were saying that they were pricing in 25 basis point cuts instead of the 50. So we'll see if the market 
revises their expectations based on that. So far, the price action hasn't moved too much to reflect it. We're going to see what Powell says in his press conference that might influence uh, our good old algos. But right now in the long term, uh, still mildly bullish. We got this breakout. I thought we would get, um, you know, I said, look, FOMC, we could get a breakout or, or move back down lower. If it was a non-FOMC event, I thought we would stall out and then get another test of the bid as we slowly sort of grind up higher. So just waiting to see what happens over here. Um, technically, the market is a little bit overextended. Um, we'd want to see this breakout hold. And um, I wouldn't get too crazy about just taking any a lot of positions uh, at this juncture. We have our two positions right now that are doing pretty well. So I'd want to see what the reaction is uh, post FOMC, post meeting, right? What Powell says. Um, if there's a very bullish reaction, I think we could have a nice chance for some overnight uh, longs. If there is a very bearish reaction, I think we have a nice chance for some overnight shorts. Um, but that's it. I would. That's probably what I'm looking for today. Um, in terms of put credit spreads or call sp credit spreads, um, I think the market, maybe call credit spreads are a little bit more different, but for put credit spreads, the market's already made a big move. I want to see it come back down before I launch in any new put credit spreads. Um, I also don't want to take really big positions uh, on swing stocks right now because, you know, I'm not as comfortable making a prediction as to what could happen until we get that data from Powell in his press conference. So shorter term, um, this is a nice bullish breakout. So that does keep us bullish. Uh, I'd want to see this breakout hold. If it holds, that would get me more bullish. And then we start to hold and then break through here. Then I would get into some swing longs. But let's give, I'm going to give a pick um, for today. I'm not going to go into M5 as much because <clears throat> FOMC days are kind of weird. You're just kind of waiting around uh, for this news to release. Much lower activity here. Don't need to force any trades. Just wait to see what information the market gives you. But I'm going to give a pick for an overnight uh, long and an overnight short, depending on how the price action ends today. So my pick for the overnight long is going to be Microsoft. A very bullish daily chart has been breaking about above this um, horizontal level, this high plus trend line as well. Um, and today it has been grinding higher, especially when the market has been flat. It's got pretty good volume, uh, about in line with the market, uh, nothing as high but still very very nice breakout this new all-time high uh, and it has room until this next high plus trend line coming over here uh which that is a far looking trend line so i like microsoft a uh, very clean breakout um and that would probably be my long pick of the day very nice stopping point as well if it closes below around 433, uh, you know, yeah, 433 level, uh, that would be your stop. So you got about one ATR in either direction. My short pick of the day is going to be CELH. I've been looking at the stock for uh, a little while now. It's had some nice bearish price action. Earnings reaction here, double top. So first nice sign of reversal, getting through its SMAs, its A, VWAP, E, uh, through some horizontal um, levels here. This was a nice patch of horizontal support that it cracked through. Uh, yesterday, it poked through the 200 SMA, came back to retest it. Today, market gapped up, flat open. Market rallied a little bit. This stock rallied down, broke through the low of yesterday, uh, and now it's just hugging the low of the day. Really nice R volume, very weak bearish price action. And we have a ton of room uh, till this next level over here, maybe this low plus trend line coming up, uh, probably around 55, 56. Let's see where this, yeah, this guy's coming in over here. So overall, I like CELH quite a bit. Uh, very, very bearish chart. So that's going to be my bearish pick of the day. So I'm going to add both of these to our uh, YouTube picks. And again, it's depending on what Powell says in his press conference and really what the market reacts to what he says in the press conference. So if we get a bullish reaction, 
We end the day close to the high of the day or making a new high of the day. Some nice green candles on heavy volume. Okay, I'm going to take some swing longs. If we get some nice strong selling, we start to fill in this gap on heavy volume here. All right, I'm going to take some shorts. So that's how I'm going to play it. Um, that's it for today's video. Keeping it pretty short, pretty light. Let's see what the reaction is. And we'll take a look at if we got into these picks on tomorrow's video.